Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi syahri sadri wa yasrili amri wa halul uqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Good evening, Tinta family. Guess who's back? It's another series of Tinta Tech Talk. Today, I'll be your host, Teacher Nadia, and I am thrilled to have all of you joining us for this talk series. Now, let's get straight into it. Our Tinta Tech Talk series is making its triumphant return with an incredible speaker. In this previous, in the previous series, Ustaz Muhammad captured our hearts with his profound insights into stories from the Quran. And today, we are welcoming Ms. Juliana Junaidi to continue the journey with us on Knowledge is a Virtue. Assalamualaikum and greetings, Ms. Juliana. How are you today? Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm doing good, alhamdulillah. How are you, Teacher Nadia? I am good as well. That's good to hear. Are you feeling so, good? Have you, have you had your dinner already? Not yet, but this is more important. <laughs> How inshallah, about this? after this, inshallah. <laughs> after this, we will eat. <laughs> All right. So, in this much-anticipated comeback episode, we'll be diving deep into the theme of Adab in Seeking Knowledge. It's a topic that couldn't be, be more relevant in our modern age. Before I pass it to Ms. Juliana, I just want to make it clear to our audience about the concept of our program. Since this is a talk series, it is not going to be a two-way interaction like a classroom setting. Students will not be able to unmute or turn on their camera throughout this session. Ms. Juliana will be giving her talk and then at the end of the session, there will be a Q&A session where you can type down your questions for her. Remember, questions have to be related to the discussed topic only. So let's make this session really fruitful. Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to our esteemed speaker, Ms. Juliana, as she takes us on the first episode of Tinta Tech Talk Series 2, Enlightening Journey of Adapt in Seeking Knowledge and Navigating the World of Gadgets with Grace. Okay, thank you so much, Teacher yeah. Nadia. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim innal hamdalillah nahmadu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlilhu fala hadiyalah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone hi okay before we start inshallah I would like to introduce myself and also the topic today. So, I'm Juliana Junaidi. You can call me Teacher Yana as my previous uh, students called me before. So, I am currently uh, doing my PhD in UKM, University of Kebangsaan Malaysia. And I'm, al- I'm also a graduate fellow from University Science Islam Malaysia. And I'm also an active member for several NGOs such as Makasi Institute Malaysia, Sahabat Asatiza and also Asatiza Selangor. So these are, inshallah, part of my contributions all this while. And today, I can't wait to share a little bit of my knowledge with you guys. So I think this is a very good effort by school. Alhamdulillah, thank you uh, to Sekolah Tinta for inviting me. So I have teaching experience for three years, um, teaching primary school. So I hope I can use my experience to share the knowledge with you guys. Um, I Firstly, I would like to praise... Sekolah Tinta uh, for having such a good initiative. So previously, I heard that you guys had this kind of uh, episode, this kind of series with Ustaz Muhammad, right? Your, your Ustaz before this, which um, he talked about Surah Al-Kahfi. So inshallah today, um, and along with uh, another three episodes with you guys, we will be talking about the topic of Adab, the, the topic of manners. And for the first episode today, we will be talking about Adapt in Seeking Knowledge. Okay, Adapt in Seeking Knowledge. So, um, for the parents, perhaps there are some parents who are here. I would also like to applaud you guys for staying together with the um, students, with your children uh, to, you know, to gain knowledge in this Barakah night, inshallah. Kamis malam Jumaat, right? So, inshallah, we'll uh, be together in this uh, journey. So... First of all, everyone, we have to know what is knowledge, right? We already know that um, uh, knowledge, seeking knowledge is um, uh, compulsory among every Muslim. Talib al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim, right? So, knowledge is not a privilege. Seeking knowledge is not a privilege, but it is a right. So, for the example, in the Quran, it, uh, the first verse uh, re- 
revealed to Prophet Muhammad SAW it is regarding Iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq Iqra wa rabbukal wa rabbukal akram So this um, first verse that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad SAW already signifies the importance of knowledge because you cannot have knowledge by uh, without reading, right? So the first um Uh, instruction is already related to knowledge. So Islam is uh, a religion who really emphasizes the knowledge. So it's not uh, a blind religion that just blindly follow, but they have a lot of justifications behind whatever things that Allah has already revealed to us. And for the example, uh, in the Quran, it, uh, it has already mentioned about لِقَوْمِ uh, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So there are many verse mentioned in the Quran, whatever uh, instruction, sometimes Allah will say, لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Which means, for those who think. So Allah, uh, in this verse, Allah mentioned uh, that we, uh, so that this verse was revealed to give, uh, to to ask people to think. Okay? So what is knowledge? Knowledge, okay, for this one, I try to separate between What is knowledge between um, among the the normal one, I mean the Western perspectives, and also the Islamic perspective? Okay, so you, you, the secular perspective or the Western perspective means uh, understanding of or information about a subject that you get by experience or study. So, if let's say you experience something, you say that oh, oh I I I know that. The the fridge, for the example, is cold. How did you know that? Because I put my hand in the fridge, for the example. So you know that, oh, I have the experience that I know I put my hand in the fridge, so now it's cold. Uh, same goes to, um, for the example, you put your hand on fire. So you know, oh, my hand is burning. So you know that, you know that the fire is hot. Because this is by your own experience. You felt this before. Okay? either known by one person or people generally. So knowledge means the state of knowing about or being familiar with something. So this is, in general, what knowledge means. Okay, um, things, for the example, whatever things that we learn, science, for the example, mathematics. So these are all some kind of um, knowledge. But let us try to see into the Islamic perspective. So knowledge in Arabic can be understood from the words and, and ma'arifah. So the word and is quite um you you normally uh, heard the word and right so um the word and is associated or linked or connected with one of the names of Allah which is al alim the most knowledgeable those um the one who knows Allah is the one who knows everything you know there are nothing that Allah does not know about Allah knows that perhaps you are hungry right now So inshallah after this you can have your dinner right So Allah knows that you are um Allah knows about the the future you don't know you keep wondering what am I going to be in 20 years from now but Allah already know what will happen to you So one of the thing is we have to be ready of whatever things that Allah has already created any path for us right And another one is um based on the word ma'rifah So ma'rifa is associated or is linked with the attribute of mankind which is al-arif right for the example if the judge normally we will call yang arif by yang arif ah so like that right so this is linked to the word uh, al-arif which is associated with the mankind compared to the al-alim which is more linked to Allah azza wa jal right and we also know that knowledge comes from Allah for the example the first one وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah Azza wa Jal taught Adam, taught uh, Prophet Adam the names of all of them which means um, um, all of the things in this world. So before before this, Adam does not know what is what is this, what is qalam for the example, what is the tree, what is the name exactly, shajarah and all that, right? Uh, Prophet Adam uh, does not know that because originally he was from the paradise and until he was Um, you know, kicked uh, kicked out by the. I mean, he was uh, sent down to the earth due to his uh, mistakes. For example, that he al- already um, regretted, right? Okay, so um, because of the knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to Prophet Adam, 
We know that Prophet Adam was given the priority, the mankind was given the priority to lead the world. For example, we are the best among the among all of the creations of Allah, even though we might be smaller. So we are sent out as the vicegerent or the khalifa of this world. Okay, we are. Uh, if you compare, we uh, if you compare us and the elephant, for example, elephant is much stronger than us. Correct. Elephant is much is much stronger than us, but we are the one who control. For example, uh, we control the elephant. Uh, we control the 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 sources of this earth because Allah has already elected or Allah has already made us the Khalifa of this world. But of course, we have a big responsibility on how do we manage resources in this earth. Okay, that is one knowledge comes from Allah, right? Um, and the second one, I have already explained before. Read in the name of your Lord who created created you from the cleaning substance. So this is, um, I, perhaps you guys have already memorized this verse from Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. So this actually explains that reading or knowledge comes from Allah and um, the importance of knowledge itself. Right? Okay, so I'll be talking about this in Malay for the uh, little bit, inshallah. So, according to Sheikh Naqib al Atas, so he divided ilmu or knowledge into two parts, which is pengenalan and also pengetahuan. Pengena- pengenalan here means ilmu yang diberikan oleh yang dikenali kepada yang mengenali berkait dengan budi pekerti. Ilmu pengenalan adalah yang utama. So, barang siapa mengenal dirinya, maka dia mengenal Tuhannya. For the example, um, if I say to that person, I really know this person. So which means you know him, not just he, uh, I mean, if you know him, he also knows you personally, right? So uh, this is what the pengenalan means. And uh, you truly know that person. And if you know yourself, this is the kalam of the ulama. If you know yourself, you will know your God. Okay, barang siapa mengenal dirinya, maka dia mengenal Tuhannya. Why? Because we are being moved. I mean, Allah is the one who gives the sense of movement to us and all that. So if we know ourselves, we will know that Allah is the one who gives the ability to us to move our hands so that we can eat and this kind of, um, and any other abilities, okay? Pengetahuan, maklumat yang diperoleh akibat pengalaman dan renungan, ilmu yang sentiasa tiada lengkap, terbatas hanya memuaskan untuk masa tertentu. So pengetahuan is the thing that currently that we are having because it keeps adding. Okay? Pengenalan is more towards uh, the ilmu or the knowledge given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is a high level knowledge that was given only to selected people. Okay, so this is pengenalan, but pengetahuan this is on the sufi sufi part, the tasawuf part of uh, the definition of knowledge, okay? So for the pengetahuan, uh, maklumat, uh, currently the, the things that we are having, all of this fall under the pengetahuan because it keeps adding and it keeps um, changing. Okay, Because sometimes when the scientists, for example, they go to the sea, they find a new, um, found, uh, a new, a new finding, a new species, for example. So this is under the pengetahuan. It's never enough and people will keep exploring about it. All right? So, uh, knowledge from the Islamic perspective also um, is the type who should bring you to certainty. Okay, the, uh, the, Islam, uh, the knowledge from the Islamic perspective is the type that should bring you certainty. For example, the first one. So, there are three types of certainty. The first one is ilmil yaqin, right? Ilmil yaqin means, okay, for the example, if let's say you heard, um, okay, I heard that there's a burning... There's a burning house at the other village. So, oh, people told me that um, there's a burning house at the at the other village. Okay, and then you was like, is it true? So, but you know this per- this person is trusted and all that. But you are not very confirmed. You are not very sure whether this is a true, um, uh, you know, the true kind of uh, knowledge or not. And then you go to that uh, situation. So this is. Ainul yakin. Ainun means mata. Ainun means eyes. So, Ainul yakin, which means you go there and you see, oh, so now, the, the, you see the house is really burning. 
Okay, so this is what we call as Ainulia pain. You see this person, uh, this thing happen in front of you, then you are convinced. Oh, so this house is really burning, right? And then Hakulia pain is when you are you yourself are in that kind of position. You are uh, in you are impacted by that kind of things. For for example, you are the family who are impacted by the burning. So you know, yes, my house is currently burning because I can I can feel the heat. Okay, I can feel the heat. So this is what we call hakul yakin. So these are the types of three types of certainty. So according to another scholar, which is Ibn Khaldun, knowledge also can be divided into three parts, which is uh, first for personal growth and fulfillment. So you learn something because you like it, because it fulfills you as a person. Um, you study math because you want to count money, for example, or else people might take the money away from you, right? So this is the 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 type of knowledge. The first one for personal growth and fulfillment. Some people they pursue their study to the highest level, for example. Um, this is for their own fulfillment, okay. And the second, and also of course to to spread knowledge to other people. But of course the kind of spreading knowledge also bring fulfillment pro- to themselves, right? So the second one, working together with others to secure livelihoods and build society. So this kind of knowledge is very important and it has to happen um, to people who are managing the country, for example. If, let's say, um, the leader, they have to work together with other people, right? They have to learn something, the knowledge... Um, in order for them to uh, to build the country, to make the country better and everything, All right? So the third one, study and knowing his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this one is of course the most important, okay? So uh, Allah is the one who created us. So Allah is the one who gives us so many things in this world. So it is very important for us to get to know Allah Azza wa Jal. All right, moving on to the next slide. Right, so for this one, sources of knowledge in Islam. So let me tell you one thing. For the Western people, they all they only believe three of them. One, two, three. But they don't believe number four and number five. So let's go one by one what actually what it actually means by what I said before. Okay. The first one is sense of experience. Okay. Sense of experience by observation and also ex, uh, observation and also experience. Senses, which, which means the five senses that you have. For example, seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting. So, for example, seeing you see a beautiful teacher. So, okay. So, I know this teacher is beautiful because I can see, I can see this teacher through my eyes. So hearing, you you hear the Al Quran, for the example. Mashallah, Al Quran is a very um, is you know is a very calm calm kind of verse. So you know, okay, I know about this because I can hear this thing. Because for example, if this person, if not, if he's not a Muslim, and you know, I, I see this kind of um, social experiment where they go uh, to non-Muslim and then they try to plug in the the Quran verse to this person and then ask ask that person what what does he feel when you hear the Quran verse and this person say oh it's very calming so you know this is one of the impact of Quran so yeah that is the knowledge okay and uh, knowledge for sense uh, from that comes from sense and experience for the example uh, what else touching for the example you touch um you touch something hot as I mentioned before, you touch something hot, uh, then you know, oh, so I know that this boiling water is very hot, so I cannot touch it because it will damage my skin and whatnot, right? And for experience, for this one, uh, if let's say, school is the place where you can learn, right? And why? How did you know that school is the place uh, you can learn? You say that I know because I go to school. But for some people, if they don't go to school, maybe they don't know that school is the type of place where you can learn over there. Same goes like uh, if you say, uh, I go to Cameron Highland. Uh, Cameron Highland is a cold place. And people say, how do you know Cameron Highland is cold? 
is because I have experienced it. I have experienced in the sense that I have been in Cameron Highland. Okay. So the second one, right? Reasoning, thinking in logic. For example, reasoning normally you learn it um, in school, right? For example, math. One plus one equal to two. So this is logic. So for example, if I eat, eat a lot, I will become fat. Uh, so this is the kind of logic. If I fall down from the bicycle, I might get injury. So this is the example of logic. And when your hands get dirty, you want to wash. Uh, you want to wash the hands. So this is uh, the the knowledge that comes from reasoning, that comes from logic. So how about innate or instinct, right? So instinct um, is is something that comes from birth, right? For the example, when the baby is hungry, the baby will cry, right? So the 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 baby will cry in order to tell the mom that he is hungry and then when the mother gives the milk how did he knows how to open the mouth so this is the kind of knowledge um, that is innate like the baby know already that i have to open my mouth in order to eat uh, so this in it this is instinct that comes from uh, that comes from them okay and comes from allah of course when the mother okay when the diapers for this when the diapers is full the baby will cry because he is uncomfortable, right? So the the baby will cry. Okay, it shows that okay, my diapers is already full of feces, for the example, and uh, of um, urine. So so let the uh, the the mummy will know about this and will continue uh, to change the diapers, right? And the fourth one, intuitive knowledge. Okay, this one, uh, the one that I told you that. The Western people, they don't uh, accept this one. So they say that this is not true. This might be some kind of uh, sickness and everything. Okay, this is intuitive knowledge. Okay, intuitive knowledge, inspiration from Allah. Let me give you the example. For the example, I think you guys know already about the mother of Prophet Musa, right? So the mother of Prophet Musa, when he know that the king wants to murder all the uh, all the baby boy in the world in you know that place so the mother uh, was given inspiration by Allah Azza wa Jal to put uh, Prophet Musa in the basket and to uh, to put it in the river so the river the, the flow of the river will carry Prophet Musa even though you know the logic will say that oh I'm I really I'm really scared that my mother uh, I mean my baby will drown but since this is the inspiration or the instinct that was given from Allah and the confidence that was given from Allah Azza wa Jal to, Prophet, uh, to the mother of Prophet Musa, the mother of Prophet Musa is really confident. Okay, I put my trust. I will, I will, I will put uh, Musa uh, as a baby in this basket and let the uh, what we call let the river carry the baby away so that he won't be killed. And another one is um, Haja, for example, Haja, one of the uh, one of the wives of Prophet uh, Ibrahim, right? So he was left in desert. So Allah Azza wa Jal give instinct to intuitive knowledge or inspiration to Haja, so that um, he ran, he ran uh, from Safa and Marwa in or- seven times in order to search for the the food. For Ismail and also uh, Hajar herself. All right, and then the next one, revelation, Never, revelation that there is knowledge sent to the prophets. So this is also not accepted by the Western country. They said that um, no, this is just some kind of sickness. I don't believe in books because they depend only for of their reasoning, only for their senses and experience or their logic. Right, they don't really believe on revelation, but in Islam we believe that revelation comes from Allah Azza wa Jalla. For example, we know that there are four four different books, the four different books. For the example, uh, Taurah was given to Prophet Musa, and Injil was uh, given to Prophet Isa, Zabur was given to Prophet Daud, and also Quran was given to Prophet Muhammad SAW. Okay, and also Prophet uh, Muhammad SAW, for the example, he knows something that we don't know, right? Um, the example is from one of the hadiths of Prophet SAW, where he said, if you knew what I know, you would laugh little and cry often. 
So it's very scary, right? So it means that Rasulullah SAW was given a lot of knowledge by Allah, the things that perhaps he is refraining himself from telling us. Okay? For the example, maybe the the day of judgment that is coming near to us, right? So even though Prophet Muhammad SAW did not know um, uh, about when exactly it will happen, But the signs were told by Prophet Muhammad SAW to us. Right? We know already the sign. Um, and actually, Prophet Muhammad SAW uh, know more about that. I mean, not particularly about the Day of Judgment, but so many other things that was uh, given, the know- the type of knowledge that was given from Allah Azza wa Jal to Prophet Muhammad SAW. Alright, moving on to the next one. Oops. Okay, knowledge from Quranic perspective. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yarfa'illahu allathina amanu minkum wallathina utul ilma darajat wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir. So, Allah will raise those who have believed among you and those who, who have and those who were given knowledge by degrees. Allah will leave the position of the knowledge seeker. Right? But what is the requirement? First, you have to do it for the sake of Allah. Not because you want to be famous. Not because you want to become rich. Okay, this is very important. yeah. So if you, if you are co- um, consistent in your, um, in your path to seek knowledge, you, Allah will lift your uh, darajat, which is your position. Okay? And of course, uh, it has to be the beneficial knowledge. Not the, the the bad kind of knowledge like stealing, cheating. So this is not a beneficial knowledge, right? Unless it is the kind of knowledge that you said, okay, how to escape from being cheated? Okay, how to escape from being um, stolen? Things like that, right? So the same, uh, the the second one. First, alu ahla zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. So ask the scholars if you do not know. You don't do uh, if you don't uh, know something. You have to ask the scholars. Okay, the scholars here does not really mean does not necessarily means the ustas. For example, currently, uh, I mean, sorry, not currently, but uh, before this, we are having a very challenge, um, you know, calamity, which is the COVID, right? So the COVID, uh, some people they ask about the COVID to the ustas. Okay, they can ask about the solar and everything, whether we can go to the masjid and all that. But if you ask um, things about medical to uh, to ustas, perhaps you are not asking to the uh, to the right person. Okay, where if where if it comes um, to the medical things, if, if it comes to disease, you have to ask the right person, which is ask the doctors and scholars instead. Uh, sorry, you have to ask the doctors. Okay. But of course, Alhamdulillah, in Malaysia, we can see the collaboration between the ustaz and doctors on how to, you know, manage the COVID really wisely and, you know, um, in a good uh, way. Okay? That is even better. So, the third part. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bayna nasi an tahkumu bil ad. Indeed, Allah commands you to render trust to whom they are due and when you judge between people, to judge with justice. So, in this ayah, or in this verse, you have to know that um, you have to give amanah or trust to those who are capable and who have knowledge so that you could judge with justice. For example, um, the clinic and the hospital should be run by people who have medical knowledge. You cannot give these people to the cobbler for example those who are good at um, at shoeing you know at sewing the shoes for example it's not the right thing right so you know if this person is good at uh, doing uh, is is doing you know the sewing the shoes fixing the shoes and whatnot so the person should uh, just get involved with the shoes industry but if the doctor should get involved with the medical industry So, and also, same with the country. The country should be run by eligible people and not because of family relationship or even money. Okay? Okay, next one. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ Are those who know equal to those who do not know? Right. So, we know already that those who know is not the same 
with if with people who don't know for the example would you be would you give your car to someone who never drive before no right because you might get into an accident right so um you have to uh, it's not the same uh, of someone uh, no and someone who don't know eh sorry all right the next one Uh, inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadi al-ulama inna Allah azizun ghafur only those who fear Allah from among his servants who have knowledge indeed Allah is exalted in might and forgiving when you have knowledge you will fear Allah more you will have taqwa and you will do amal ma'ruf nahi munkar which means you ask people or you enjoin people to do good and you um, forbid people to do anything wrong Okay, the next one. Wa tilka al-amthalu naqribuha lil-nas wa ma ya wa ma ya'qiluha illa al-'aqilu illa al-'alimun. And these examples we present to the people but none will understand them except those of knowledge. So there are actually many analogy analogy in Quran and this can only be be understood by those who have the knowledge. Right? For example, the Quran said life is like water, right? So you know water is like the basis of the knowledge. Uh, so this kind of thing um, was mentioned in the Quran, and you can only understand it when you have knowledge. Okay. Next one: virtue of seeking knowledge. Right. Uh, if anyone pursues a path in search of knowledge, God will thereby make easy for him um, a path to paradise. Right. So you have to know that seeking knowledge is very hard. So you have to memorize and you have to understand a lot. Okay, for the example, um, the the poor people they even study under the lamp, right? But uh, because of this, Allah will make uh, the path to go to the paradise even easier because of the sacrifice. So for you guys who are alhamdulillah being blessed with the gadgets in front of you, so now you can listen to me when I'm talking. So you. Have to even study harder, okay? Because Allah has already blessed you with so many um, ni'mah in this world, right? So the next one, man da'a ila hudan kana lahu min al-ajr mithla ujuri man tabi'ahu la yankus dalik min ujuri mshay'an. Right, so for this one, if you teach someone something, whoever calls to guidance, okay, if you teach someone something and that person follow what you taught them, you will get rewards, right? So, for the example, if you teach your sister to do good um, and to respect parents, and your sister, when your sister does that, when your sister follows whatever you say, then you will also be rewarded. Okay, but the scary thing is the opposite thing could also happen, which is if you teach someone to lie, and then that person know, oh, this is lying. Oh, I will because my brother teach me before. Now I can lie, so I know that lie is uh, okay because my sis, uh, my brother do it. For example, so you will also get the um, sins if that person is lying. So you get what I mean, right? Okay. And then the third one, if Allah wants goodness for you, if Allah wants to do good to a person, He makes him comprehend the religion. If Allah wants goodness for you, He will make you understand the religion. So that's why it's very important for you to ask Allah for understanding and guidance. So that it means that Allah want goodness for you. But you cannot say that, oh, I am not good at understanding and memorizing because Allah does not want goodness for me. How can you say that? It's not allowed to say that, okay? But you, because you don't know. But you have to constantly pray to Allah um, so that you will be given understanding and also guidance. So that you will be guided. All right, the next one. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay. Uh, verily, the angels lower their wings for the seeker of knowledge. So, whenever you are in halaqa, for the zabain class, or maybe in a circle of knowledge, the angels will lower their wings in order to cover you with protection, in order to give you barakah, right? And also, what happened is the inhabitants of the the heavens and earth, those who are in heavens, which is the angel, and also on earth, and the fish even. Will seek forgiveness for the scholar, for those the for the student of knowledge. Okay, um, they will say they will say, Ya Allah, please um, 
um, please uh, forgive this person, ya Allah. So this kind of things is happen, and this is from the Prophet saw Salam's hadith. Okay, and the virtue, the the Prophet also said the virtue of the scholar over the worshipper is like the superiority of the moon over the stars, right? Um, and also the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. So this means that uh, the scholars are even better than the worshipper because it is even better if both of them are combined together. Okay? So when someone is worshipping worshiping Allah but they don't know how to worship Allah, that is also a problem. So that's why you have to have knowledge so that you can worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay? And the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets okay they might not leave behind gold or silver queen uh, or silver coins but they leave behind knowledge okay the next one uh, i love this hadith so much okay when a man dies all his good deeds come to an end except three first ongoing charity the second is beneficial knowledge and the fourth one is righteous son who prays for him so you can see here beneficial knowledge is one of the things that uh, a man, uh, if even though a man has already passed away, he can still get this. Okay? He can still get the reward. For example, this person, maybe when he was still alive, he wrote a lot of books. Okay? And whoever reads his books will get, I mean, uh, whoever reads his book will benefit from the book. And the, the person who writes the book will get the, uh, will get the reward, even though he has already passed away. So this is so amazing, okay? This this person might not have a righteous son to, you know, to uh, or righteous son or children to pray for him. And also, he might not be rich, but he has a lot of knowledge. So when he use this um, for, the, for the sake of Allah, so he will be rewarded. Right, so let's see the, the next one. Warning on knowledge. Okay, I'll try to be quick because there are still <laughs> quite much numbers of light. So for this one, warning on knowledge, verily Allah does not take away knowledge by snatching it from the people, but, but he takes away knowledge by taking away the scholars. So what does that mean? So when you see the scholars, you know, like the recently, Yusuf Al-Qaradawi, so he passed away. So I was really sad because he was one of the very uh, informative and knowledgeable scholars. And when he passed away, I actually cried because... He has contributed a lot um, to the Islamic uh, knowledge uh, specifically. Okay. And then, uh, number two. Whoever, this is also a scary hadith. Whoever seeks knowledge to argue with scholars or to use it to argue with the fools and to have people's faces turned towards him, then he shall be admitted to the fire. So, those who study to show off or to fight with the scholars, argue with, the, with other peoples. So, and, and, and study only so that people will respect him, he will enter the hellfire. Okay. The next one. The feet of the slave of Allah shall not move until he, has, he is asked about five things. Okay. First, he will be asked about his life. Are you doing benefic beneficial things when you are alive? Number two, knowledge. Are you doing the knowledge? Uh, are you, are you uh, learning for the sake of Allah? Or do you apply the knowledge? Or number three, wealth. Do you use it? Use your wealth, uh, wealth wisely. Number four, how do you earn? Is it uh, from halal or haram? Or on, on Allah will also ask about your body. How do you take care of it? But uh, what, but uh, what I want to highlight here is regarding the knowledge. Okay, whether you learn for the sake of Allah or whether you apply the knowledge that you have. All right. Now we go to the tips on seeking knowledge. So the first one, have sincerity. Okay, so you first one, you have to have sincerity. I've already mentioned many times before this, when you seek uh, knowledge, you have to do it only for the sake of Allah. Not to be famous, not to be rich, not to gain uh, power. So this is really important, okay? And don't use religion to get dunya. Okay, uh, in Quran, Allah already mentioned, وَلَا uh, don't sell my verses with small prices. What does it mean? Does it mean that okay? Uh, does it mean that uh, I will I will send I will sell um, Quranic verse with a higher price? No, it does not mean that. But like that, but it means that um, the verse of Allah cannot be sold with any price in the dunya. Okay, 
and don't use the Quran to justify your actions. So this is very important. So you have when you uh, learn about Quran, you have to know the general um, things about Quran. It means that you cannot do something and, and then you uh, and when you argue, you say, "Oh, the Quran said this," but sometimes the context might be different and all that. So it's important to know about it. Okay, and then the next one is uh, be consistent. Okay. Be consistent. Okay, I know everyone that studying is very hard, right? Studying is very hard, but you have to focus, okay? And you have to do uh, many repetitions, okay? Um, for those who recite the Quran, the Hafiz, for example, when they try to memori- memorize the Quran, they will uh, face many um, hardship. But when they are, if they are consistent, then they will be rewarded. Every ha- hardship that they face, they will be rewarded by Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So be consistent and don't give up. And also, it's important that you don't compare your journey to other people. Right? So, but you have to be a class, for example, first. And you learn the beneficial knowledge and try to be consistent. You focus on progress and not just the result. Okay? And then the third one. Learn from a true scholar. Uh, okay, so it's very important to get the real and beneficial knowledge, right? So scholar here, as I told you before, it does not really, it does not only means the ustaz, but it also means, um, it refers to any kind of uh, uh, knowledge, any kind of field. For example, if you want to use the, if you want to learn about the religion, you have to know that, you have to learn from the scholar that explains based on Quran and Sunnah. And those who study discipline uh, in each area. For example, the, the language, the Arabic language, for example, or the Tawheed, or the Hadith and all that. So, uh, learn from the true scholar. And for example, if you study medicine, you have to learn from the real doctors or those who are involved in the medical fields. Because if you don't, if you don't do that, um, you might, when you become a doctor later on, you might kill other people, right? So the same goes to um, architect and engineer, for example. If you learn from a fake architect or engineer, so your building might collapse because uh, this person is not studying the discipline like, you know, one by one, step by step and whatnot. So that could endanger people's life. And it's very important also to respect your teachers okay everyone uh, i hope that in tinta you respect your teachers whenever the teacher you know told you something that is of course beneficial for you so you have to listen to them okay because you will not get a knowledge that is barakah if you distress if you disrespect the teachers right if you let's say the teachers ask you to do homework then do it try your best to do it even though you don't know put some effort to it okay of course don't cheat don't copy from other people Right, this is very important, and love uh, and try to be polite, and then um, to also love your friends. All right. So the next one is start with the Quran. So Quran is the words of Allah. So it's very important to read every day, even just for five minutes. Okay. So you have to allocate your um for allocate some time to study the, the Quran. Not only, you know, okay, I am so busy, I want to do homework, and then I forget the Quran. No. Try your best to even read maybe one page, maybe half page. Okay? Inshallah. Right? So, the next one is act upon what you learn. Right? So, the companion said, uh, we will not learn any new lang- any new knowledge from the prophet, prophet except that we will apply whatever things that we have already learned. So, you see the attitude of the companion? So the companion will always uh, apply whatever that they learn from the prophet before they learn the new knowledge. So this is the attitude of the companion and, and we, we should try to emulate or follow the companion, okay? And al-alimu bila amal kashajari bila thamar. Okay, knowledge without practice is just like the tree without fruits. So this is one of the metaphor, peribahasa. Okay, so yeah, it's important to apply whatever things that you have learned okay ask for forgiveness you know why you have to ask for forgiveness because knowledge is light right and sometimes you might be unable to understand the knowledge and you say why i can't understand this 
sometimes you have to reflect on yourself. Oh, maybe I have already committed many sins, right? I watch too many, I play too many video games, for example. I quarrel with my mom. I argue with my mom. I don't what I don't do chores, for example. So you have to say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, and maybe ask uh, the people around you whether you made mistake to them, right? And because um, knowledge is light and knowledge cannot enter the dark, uh, the heart that is dark. So be careful if your heart is dark, so you have to always seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay? All right. Ah, this is a good one. Uh, managing my screen time. So, so I was told by the teachers to inform you guys about how do you manage your, uh, how to manage your screen time. Okay. It's very important to address because currently we live in, uh, I mean, our life is full of gadgets, right? Um, phone, iPad, tab, laptop, computer. These are the kind of examples. So in order to have focus in the process of seeking knowledge, so this is how you should, this is why you should uh, manage your screen time. Okay, first, I need you guys to be objective in your in using your gadgets. What does it mean by objective? You have to ask yourself, what is the, pur- the purpose of me holding my phone right now? What is the purpose of me using this iPad? Do I want to search something beneficial? Do I just want to scroll to get funny videos? So you have to ask yourself, oh, am I doing something beneficial? Okay. And one of the suggestions is you can go to YouTube. Uh, but instead of watching gamers, sometimes you guys love to watch gamers play online, right? St- streamer or whatever it is. So you try to search for other things. For example, Islamic videos or maybe videos that can give you new skills. For example, learn about science, about cooking and everything. All right? All right, the second one. Huh? Enjoy boredom. So these days, people, they cannot stand when they uh, when they just... You know, stand still. They will be like, ah, oh, it's very boring. For example, in the assembly as well, they'll be like, ah, oh, it's very boring to hear that the teacher or principal say something. So you have to enjoy the boredom. Why? Because when you are bored, you will allow yourself to think uh, critically and also be creative. Okay? So enjoy yourself. And you also will understand more about your feelings. So don't always take your phone and then scroll, take the, see the funny videos and all that. So you try to enjoy the boredom and this is how you will be able to engage to the inner self, right? And you also can uh, care about other people. You will care more about other people when you try to enjoy your boredom. Okay, the next one is turn off notifications from your phone. So this is actually um, applicable. You can go to the settings and try to hide notifications from the things that always give you distraction. For example, email, social media, right? Like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever things that you are, you know, that keeps appearing on your phone and trying to distract you from doing your work. Okay. And it is even better if you can put your phone at a place that is not reachable. Okay, for example, I saw this video before. They put the phone in the box. Okay, and then um, they set timer, one hour for the example. Because I want to do some work, I don't want to scroll my phone. I put it in the box and then this person cannot um, reach to the phone until it's one hour. Because it's locked and it can only be opened um, after one hour. So this is the kind of things uh, people do to gain productivity. Right, and then number four, this is very important. Don't use gadgets during meal time. So you have to respect the parents who make the food. It doesn't matter if it's your mother or your father who make the food. Okay, you have to respect them. So try to engage conversation with them. Okay, you have to respect the ni'mah given by Allah because not all people can afford the food that you are eating. So after this, I want you guys to not um, you know, use phone during uh, meal time, uh, any nilah dinner or breakfast, okay. So try to ask about your parents' day. How's your uh, how's your day, mom? Is it good in the office? So the parents also can do the same with the children, right? The next thing, replace screen time with other things. Because sometimes I say, okay, remove screen time. Don't uh, don't touch your phone and all that. But what actually can you replace with, right? So the answer is reading, writing. 
Okay, you make something new. Reading, writing, exercising, or painting, drawing. So these are the examples of the things that do not involve gadgets. So you can use these things, okay, to replace the screen time. Right, so and then the last one, um, limit your social media consumptions. Don't spend hours scrolling, scrolling the TikTok, Instagram. Because of course, you sometimes you don't notice, oh, oh my God, it's already one hour. So you have to put some time um, to limit your social media consumptions. And another one that I don't put here is actually don't use gadget 30 minutes before bed and also 30 minutes after you wake up. Because um, the dopamine, okay, the dopamine is actually a hormone that uh, that give you instant gratification. Whenever you op- you open your TikTok or the uh, because you feel good about opening your TikTok and and find um, funny videos, for example, the the, do- the the dopamine hormone will increase, and you have to actually replace this dopamine hormone with something else, for example exercising and drawing so these kind of things instead of uh, the gadgets right so this is the some of the dua that i would share with you guys allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-arba min ilmin la yanfa wa min qalbin la yasha wa min nafsin la tashba wa min du'a'in la yusma oh allah i seek refuge in you from the knowledge that does not benefit from a heart that is not reverent from a soul that is not content and from a supplication that is not answered. So this, uh, this um, dua is from Rasulullah SAW's um, hadith. Okay, the second one is uh, the same. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalam mutaqabbala. Oh Allah, indeed I ask you for beneficial knowledge and a good halal provision and actions which are accepted. And the third one, Allahumma anfa'uni bima 'allamtani wa 'allimni ma yanfa'uni wa rizqni 'ilman tanfa'uni bih. Oh Allah, benefit me with what you have taught me and teach me that will that which will benefit me and grant me knowledge which will benefit me. All right, alhamdulillah that was a really insightful and amazing talk by Miss Juliana. Thank you so much. I personally love how she explained the concepts with easy examples and really cute visuals as well. Yeah, so I think it's really easy to understand, especially for the kids here. Okay, so for this session, I need everyone to try uh, to type your answer in the chat box. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first one, the first um, situation, you heard your friend said, I want to become a scholar so I can become rich and people could respect me. What would be your response? So, if anyone interested to answer, please type your answer in the chat box. Okay? So, that is for question one. You can actually choose any question that you want to answer. All right? So, number two, teacher Diana, Scott, <laughs> Scott Reza, I don't know, I just mentioned any names, Scott Reza because he did not complete his homework. Reza then threw his book, uh, his book on the floor and yelled at the teacher. What would be your response? We have an answer here for question one from Zishan. Okay. His response would be, hey, if you want to be a scholar, don't do it for respect. Do it for Allah. Okay. Think, Good okay. job. <laughs> okay. And number two, I will advise Reza. Wow. If Afaf. Afaf. Okay, Afaf. Uh, okay, wait, wait. Let me address the first question. First one, yeah. Hey, if you want to be a scholar, don't do it for respect. Do do it for Allah. So, first of all, you have to fix the tone, okay? Hmm. So, if let's say, if you want to um, advise your friends, you have to use um, the good kind of way. Because sometimes, some persons, they might be reluctant to accept uh, advice if it's if you are using the kind of harsh tones, okay? Uh, let's try to do it, okay? Um, okay, your friend, let's say uh, your friend is acting like that. You say, I don't think it's good for you to become a scholar um, so that you be- can become rich and so people could respect you. If you want to do something, you should do it for the sake of Allah. Uh-huh. That's right. Do it for the sake of Allah or else... Um, 
the hellfire will be waiting for you. Ah, that's even scary, right? So when your friend heard about this, your friend might be, oh my god, this is really serious. I shouldn't be doing this. I should only study for the sake of Allah. All right. So this is the good one. Yeah, Sharu Aiman also uh, answer the same thing. Do it for Allah. Okay. So for the second one, um, Afaf said, um, Afaf said the that he would advise Reza. What kind of advice? Uh, what kind of advice? Maybe Afaf can um, sure. maybe put some details on it, right? Okay, and, and also um, Dean Hamid, uh, you know, maybe the 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 parents. Uh, I'm not really sure about it, but uh, anger is from Shaitan. Masha Allah, <laughs> I love this answer. Yes, that is true. Anger is from Shaitan, and also you have to respect the teacher. Yes. That's true, that's true. Good attempts from everyone. We appreciate the answers. Yes, of course. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I think so So far there are okay, some answers. Um, okay, Afaf said, please respect other people to be be a good Muslim. Okay, that's a good advice, Afaf. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right? <laughs> you have to respect other people, including the teacher, because this teacher is giving you knowledge. Right? MashaAllah. Um, for the next episode, I will be giving about maybe something that your parents will will like it, because maybe the 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 behaviors of the children will change once they listen to my talk. Hopefully, inshallah, okay? Because it's about adab um, in among parents, okay? Adab in parents, uh, things like that, okay? So I hope everyone would stay tuned with me with the second episode, inshallah. Shi Nadia, maybe you can wrap up the whole thing. Okay, so it's okay for me to wrap it up and end it, yeah? Alright, thank you so much to teacher Juliana for this session. And yes, so stay tuned to her next session, which is about Adab with Parents. So this time around, it was Adab with um, Gadgets, Knowledge as well. So there you have it, a glimpse into our Tinta Tech Talk Series 2 comeback episode. We hope you have gained some insights on the world of Adab in Seeking Knowledge and the art of handling gadgets responsibly. I hope you have taken some notes maybe from teacher Juliana's presentation. She had some really useful um, points as well. Okay, so yeah, stay tuned for the next one for a more captivating insight from Ms. Juliana. And remember, knowledge is a virtue and together we can uncover its treasures. So thank you everyone for tuning in tonight and we will catch you in the next episode of Tinta Tech Talk to uh, Talk Series 2. Um, so let me just end this with a quick uh, read of uh, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Assalamualaikum and have a good night everyone Thank you teacher Jirana And thank you everyone Welcome Bye everyone Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Bye